of his people. Praise draws God. Come on, let's lift up our hands. Just praise him for a minute. Can we all do that? Give him the high praise. Hallelujah. Lord, we lift up your name. We exalt you, God. We thank you for your living word. We thank you for your holy presence. We lift up Jesus, the author, perfecter of faith. Hallelujah. We enthrone you in our praises. We lift up your name. There's none like you. There's none like you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we pray that as we go into the next two sessions, you enlarge our capacity, all of to receive, oh Lord. Make us so hungry, so receptive for what you have in store for each and every one of us. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. I have the privilege to once again invite our guest speaker, Pastor Samuel. Let's give him a big hand as he come up. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> have you been learning something? Have you been learning something? All right, my heart, my dream, my desire is that I can impart something to you and not something just that will sit in your head but will go down to your heart that you will live a different life altogether which is based on the word. I want to highlight in such a manner and, and you know, to, uh, to stir your appetite to seek God and his word. Because if I can... If I can build my life to focus on the word and stand on the word, I am on the road to success and victory. It doesn't matter where you are right now. That's not your destiny. All right? Now, you can change your destiny by 
letting faith work in your heart, the word will begin to do awesome wonders. Every one of you has been has the potential to excel. Every one of you has the potential to succeed. Every one of you has the potential to be a winner, a victor, and a champion in life. Don't blame the devil. Don't blame your circumstances. Don't blame your relatives, your in-laws for where you are right now. The word has been given so we can live in victory. Somebody say amen. So as we continue, let's just pray for a moment. Father, we pray that you will speak to us again this session and you will help us to understand and move in the anointing and the power and wisdom of God. Help us to receive, Lord, this morning. I pray everyone here will be blessed through this word. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. Okay. Uh, I'm looking at the clock. Can you please set that up for me, please? Okay. Now, <clears throat> we're talking about faith in action. So let's go to Joshua chapter 6. And I'm highlighting and I'm trying to explain to you how this works. Joshua chapter 6. Now, I think it's half, Pastor, you said half hour. It's, it's giving me 57 minutes, so you won't have any time left. It's 12.30, right, Pastor? Okay, good. Now, uh, Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, none came in. All familiar with the story, right? Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I've given you into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And you should, okay, let's stop there. We'll continue to read. Watch what I said. What did I say? God's perspective is different from our perspective. God sees the future. I may not be able to see. You know how these days people, I don't know about, <clears throat> people are so um, drawn towards astrology. And they even, like even in the apps now, you have astr astrologers predicting and people say, are you a Cancer? Are you a Virgo? Are you a Lion? Or whatever, you know, Leo. Um, I say I'm a child of God. <clears throat> I don't identify with any of the stars because the stars are in the hands of God. Now, they're looking to know their future by looking at the stars. Are you with me, everybody? They believe that the stars can predict their future. Look, I may not know the future, but I know the one that holds the future. Say amen. Now, here he's saying, no matter what the stars may be saying, you don't have to worry. I've already spoken. So don't look at them. They're an abomination unto God. As a child of God, you should have nothing to do with astrology. Astronomy is different to astrology, okay? So we got to do nothing with astrology. But look, let's get back to this place. It's an impossible situation because the gates are shut, the walls are strong and and, uh, and firm and the walls of Jericho we are told are so wide that chariots could run abreast some people say two chariots some people say more chariots could run on top of the wall they're not these flimsy walls we have today 9 inch 12 inch walls huge walls the walls were so thick there were houses in the walls Rahab lived in one of those everybody with me all right, so just giving you the picture. Now, these guys did not have the weapons needed. They did not have the manpower because the inside them were giants. You know, um, all these, the giant population over there. And so when you look at them, it would appear like it's, there was no way you could take over that. But with God, all things are possible. And to him that believeth, all things are possible. Now, God had already spoken and said what? I've given you the land. Now, that's where I have to believe that that land belongs to me. How I'm going to possess it, I may not know. But I have to lay claim of it on it by faith. That's step number one. Don't try to figure out as to how you will do it. 
He will give you the instruction. But what God requires first from me is to come into agreement with God. So number one step in faith is to come into agreement with God. Okay? So he says, Joshua, see something. What do you mean see? Joshua is not blind. Joshua is seeing with his eyes, and this is what is reported in verse 1. The gates are shut. The walls are standing. There's no one going in, no one going out. That's what I see. No, 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 no. God is saying, I want you to see what I see. What does God see? What does God see about you? What does God see about your future? What does God see about your finances? What does God see about your health? What does God see about your marriage? What does God see about your family? See what God sees. All that God sees has already been written in the word. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. That's why you need the help of the Holy Spirit to enlighten you. Open your eyes to see what he's seeing. Because without seeing, listen, listen. Seeing is believing. Believing is seeing. Believing is not faith. To work in faith, step number one is believing, which is the ability to see. I have to see what God sees. What did the woman with issue of blood do? First, she saw herself touching the hem of his garment before she stepped out and did anything. So the first thing you need to do is, in your prayer time, you're crying out to God and saying, Lord, open my eyes that I may see. Open my eyes that I may see. What does the Bible say? It's a prophecy, a prophetic word from Isaiah. You, you see, but you don't see. You hear, but you don't understand. Your, you, your eyes are open, but you don't see. You hear with your ears, but you don't understand. Because if you did, I would have healed you. See, what is stopping me from possessing and experiencing what God has promised is my inability to see. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. You know, when Jesus was walking through Jericho, the Bible talks about a guy by the name Bartimaeus. And we call him the blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus sitting on the roadside and there's commotion and people. And he asks, what's going on? He said, Jesus, the son of David is going, moving. So he cries out and says, son of David, have mercy on me. So he calls him. He says, what do you want? Watch this. He never said, heal my eyes. I, I, I don't have the reference here. That's why I'm not, I'm not reading it. But if you have, read it. Okay. He says, he doesn't say open my eyes. He doesn't say heal me of my eyesight. He says that I may receive sight. Sight is different from just seeing. Because sometimes blind people can have their eyes open, but they can't see. Is that true? That's probably how this guy was. His eyes were open, but he could not see. So he says, Lord, give, help me to receive sight. Receive sight. What we need is sight. We need the ability to see what God is seeing. And what God is seeing is already established in the word. But sometimes God will reinforce that by speaking to you a prophetic word or giving you a vision. But not always does he give you a prophetic word, nor does he always give you a vision or a dream. But there are specific times he does that, but you don't really, I mean, you don't have to be discouraged. He has not given you that. Get into the word and see what God is saying. See, I have given you. Hallelujah. See, I have healed you. See, I've replaced you with a, I, I, I've replaced that kidney of yours. I've replaced your damaged heart or whatever that is. God is a miracle working God. But whenever God does anything with man, he needs man's participation. Amen. Amen. So he needs you to participate with him. He needs you to agree with him. He needs you to walk with him. So he says, Joshua, I've given it. But before you take any action, before you step out to do anything, first get the picture. It's not the action that's going to produce. Action based on your conviction, which we called faith, is going to produce. So don't act without understanding. See, people tithe, right? But they don't have, see any blessing in their life. People give, they don't see increase. Why? They do it out of duty. They do it without understanding. They do it without 
revelation. But once you receive understanding and revelation, now every time you return the tithe, every time you sow a seed, you are doing with understanding. That means with a conviction, I know. Hallelujah. The we, see, I'll teach you on that subject later. But I know I will be blessed. That knowing is primarily the first step. The most important step is to come to the place where your eyes are open to see what God is seeing. Glory be to God. What do you see about your future? And let not what you see be determined by what you're going through right now. Let not your doctor tell you when you will die. They're going to get, get to the examination. The examiner said, well, it's a terminal sickness. Most probably you will live for another three months. Who is he to tell me how long I should live? Who is he? How can he tell a man you will die? The Bible tells me, this is the picture I should get. The Bible tells me that the power of life and death is not in the doctor's mouth, but in my mouth. The power of your tongue. So don't say what he said. Don't say what Google is saying. Don't say what the world is saying. Say what God said. Amen. Hallelujah. I will not leave this planet until I finish my assignment. I don't care how the devil will try to attack you. You cannot give in. You may be diagnosed with a situation. You may be involved in something that's terrible. Whatever it is, the devil does not have the power to kill you. It's period. It's only when you agree with the devil and you start speaking with your mouth, you empower the devil to now work against you. And that's why people die early. How many know, we all know now that many people during COVID died out of more, a lot of them died out of fear more than the sickness. Is that true? What happened? They empowered the enemy to kill them. They empowered the enemy. So it's important. Listen to me, people of God. You don't come to church just so that you can ease your conscience and say, well, I, because if I don't go, God may punish me. You come to sit to be exposed to the word of life. You come to receive the word that will open your eyes to see what God is saying. You come to receive life. You come to receive understanding. You come to receive knowledge that will put you over into the next realm. Take you to the next level. Say amen. See, your first step is the ability to see. I see myself prospering. I see myself going to my next level. Hallelujah. I'm sure you have a word that the pastor has released over this church for this year. A word for the year, right? Don't forget it. See that. The word that God gave us for our church is enlargement. And I got to, as a pastor, I have to see it. I have to say it. And I have to speak to my people to be able to see it and say it along with me. That's, how am I going to enlarge? That's step number two. Step number one is establishing the image. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, I'm a winner. Come on, I'm a winner. Lo loudly from as if you really believe it. Now, come on. I'm a winner. I'm a champion. I'm more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. I'm blessed. I'm rich. Let the poor say, don't ever say I'm poor. You impoverish yourself with your own tongue. Don't let the weak say. Let the sick say. That's what you are. See, now we have said that, but this is where the disconnect is. We're saying it, but we're not seeing it. That's why it's not working. We're acting before we see. It's like the blind leading the blind. They're going to fall in the ditch. It's not going to manifest. They're not going to be on the right track. So before God gives any instruction to Joshua, he said, Joshua, before I tell you how you're going to possess this land, first see what I see. I have given it. Do you see yourself in possession of that property? Do you see yourself in possession of that house? Do you see yourself in possession of that land for the church or the land for the ministry? Do you see it? Because you got to see it before you can act on it. Because let me tell you, 
after Joshua saw is when God gave him instruction. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Every one of you should be blessed to be a blessing. I want you to see. Listen, your blessing is not dependent on your, on your job. Your blessing is not dependent on you will not lack. See, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. And he's not talking about just money. Any resource that is required to fulfill your destiny. It could be manpower. It could be technical power. It could be whatever. I shall not want God because when the Lord is my shepherd, I know my shepherd is guiding me and leading me in the direction that I need to go. And if I can see that, I will not lack. I cannot lack. Even if I'm surrounded by lack, I declare I shall not lack. Because right in the midst of famine, I declare I shall only flourish. He never said in the days of famine, you will survive. He said in the days of famine, you will flourish. That means you will have more than abundance. That means you will, in, you will be in a place where you will, not only will your needs be met, but the needs of all those around you will be met. You will become a Joseph in that place. Say amen. amen. That's our destiny. Not being a people that are looking to the government for everything or organizations or people. No, we, the Bible says, we are to provide wisdom to the world. They have to come to the church for wisdom. We preach it, we read it, but do we see ourselves like that? Most of the time we see ourselves as a minority. We need help from the government. We need help from this department. We need nothing wrong, but never let that become your source. I'm not teaching us to become arrogant. I'm not teaching us to become very prideful. No, but at the same time, I'm saying, let us not become dependent on them. Even if they say no, we can say we have another source, which never dries up. Hallelujah. No matter what they try to do around the world, they can never shut down the church. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Let us have the mentality of a winner. Let us have the mentality of a blessed person. Let us have the mindset of the person that is blessed to be a blessing. Don't let your environment, your circumstances, people around you minimize you and cause you to become useless. We are here to be a blessing to others. Somebody say amen. See, I've given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. And now he says, you shall do this once and you shall do this. And then it goes on. And uh, I don't want to read all that. Uh, and you know how we, how we possessed it. So, as we're reading the word, that's why prayer is so important. Because if my spirit man is not activated, all my, listen, we have spiritual faculties. Prayer helps our spiritual fa faculties to be activated, to be able to tune into what God is saying. So faith cometh by hearing the word. While I'm preaching this, don't just listen to my words, but try to listen to the voice of God behind the words I speak. Because all I might be saying, there might be just one word that will capture your heart. That one word is what you're supposed to get, which becomes your word for, to be released, okay? So, there was this, you know, many of you know Brother Jerry Savelle, or maybe you don't. Brother Jerry Savelle travels with Brother Copeland and uh, Jesse Duplantis and other men of God. And suddenly he was, um, had some kind of a issue with, uh, he lost his memory. He didn't know who he was. They hospitalized him, and uh, they were not giving a good report. So when he was in the hospital, Brother Copeland and Brother Jesse went, prayed, but he did not recognize them. But one thing he said, he was slowly getting back. He took messages, a tape full of faith messages, plugged them to his ears, and kept listening hour after hour after hour just listening to the word, not listening to what the doctors are saying, what others are talking, what was the experience of other people that went through the same experience or same diagnosis that he had. No, he just 
fed his mind and his ears with the word of God. Just kept listening. Why? Faith cometh by. So, which means what? A conviction has to be birthed. How many times should I listen to, this, to the message? Until conviction is birthed. We say faith, but for us, for, for us to have a better understanding, let's replace the word faith and say until conviction or confidence comes, we should keep listening. Over a few days, he was completely restored to normal health. Today, he's just a normal person going around the world preaching the gospel again, preaching the word of God. But he could have lost his mind and lost everything. But thank God for the power in the word. Hallelujah. But you see, we have Bibles. And many of us have many versions in our house. Many versions of the Bible. But we hardly read it. We hardly spend time reading the Word and studying and spending significant amount of time that can impact and affect our lives. So it's important for us to understand that we have to get into the Word. The Word, again, just giving you an understanding now. The Word in English, which we use the Word in the Greek, we all know our two words, logos and rhema, right? You know that, right? Logos is the expressed, spoken, and expressed will of God. Logos actually helps us to understand the intent of God, the heart of God, the operations of God, how we manifest things, and how he does things. It's an overall picture to give me an a, a, a understanding of who God is and how he works. But rhema is a specific word to a specific person in a specific situation. So you cannot take the logos and try to do what they did in the Bible or somebody else did because that would be presumption. Okay. So before you can act on something, the word has to birth conviction in you. Is that clear? You have to see it to birth conviction and confidence in you. Now, we know the scripture where God said to, uh, Jesus said to Peter, come, and he walked on water, right? But if you and I tried to walk on water today, what would happen? We would not be walking on water. We could, it could become very tragic, right? So what happened in, there was a, a time when there was great revival in Indonesia. I don't know if you heard the name Meltari. Meltari was a, a, a man of God who God used powerfully in the Indonesian revival. And during that time, revival was happening in different parts of Indonesia. And uh, so there were three girls, young girls, that were wanting to go to this specific uh, crusade that was happening. And so they determined in their hearts because there was really revival sweeping across the nation. And so they came across this river and they had to go to the other side. They had to pass to the other side to get to this place. But the river was flooding and there were no means of going across. So they said to each other, well, Peter walked on water. We serve the same God. We believe in the same God. He's a God of miracles. So let's believe and let's walk on water. So they prayed and they started walking. And they were ankle deep. Then they were knee deep. Then they were hip deep. They were still not walking. But very soon they were swept by the current and they all died. It, was not, it didn't bring glory to God. It brought shame to the name of God. People began to blame God for what they did. But that was not faith. That's presumption. See, they did not, they did not develop the image. They, they were trying to work faith through their mind. Faith is not of the mind. Faith is of the spirit that births that conviction and that confidence. So don't act before you can see it. Don't act before you're confident. Be be don't act before that conviction becomes real in your heart. Say amen. So that's the reason why we have to learn to hear the voice of God. Rhema, listen to me, is always birthed out of the logos. It never contradicts the logos. Rhema is always birthed from the logos, never contradicts the logos. Why are there so many cults today? They all started, they all use the Bible as their basis, but they all deviated, veered away, and they had extra revelation than what the Word says. They had dreams and their vision. Now, we cannot deny that they, were, they had dreams. We cannot deny they had visions. But the source was not God. How do I know? Because it does not agree with the logos of God. Say amen. Are you all with me? So we have to be careful. 
We have to be careful. That's, that's the reason why you need to get to church. Because you need to be pastored by people that know God. That are walking with the Lord. So, so that they're keeping you in safe quarters. And you're not falling prey to deceptive teachings. And just be lured away to people who do just do miracles. Or just say, every, every so often, I saw Jesus. I had this vision. I had that dream. And keep talking only about the supernatural without corroborating it from the word of God. A lot of people, many, 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 many people have been, have been deceived. And have walked away from the truth. Because they just... They just uh, uh, you know, had faith in the supernatural. God is supernatural. The word is supernatural. But any supernatural activity that you claim to have had or somebody claims to have had must always line up with the word. All in agreement said, amen. amen. So make sure you are sitting regularly under good teaching. You have a good pastor who is walking with the Lord. And I know the pastor here, he is a man of God and he walks with the Lord, submit to his leadership, submit to his authority. And if you have any experiences or somebody coming and teaching you something else, please don't be deceived by those things. Because let me tell you, miracles can be done even by the devil. Now, I didn't get the time to teach you, but I tell you what, there, I told you about the fourth dimension, right? The fourth dimension is a spiritual dimension. In the spiritual dimension, there is a demonic dimension as well. And there's a divine dimension. That's why the devil also can do miracles. Talk to me. Amen? You see, when, when Moses stood before Pharaoh and he threw his stick, staff on the ground, what did it become? It became a serpent. What did the magicians do? They also turned their staffs into serpents. That power did not come from God. It came from a demonic force. It did not come from this world. It came from a superior world which is the demonic, which is the fourth dimension or the spiritual dimension, which is demonic. But praise God, the divine dimension is far superior to the demonic dimension. So not, you know, today there are, there are cults, there are religions, there are spiritual um, experiences where people are healing people, not with God's power, but the demonic power. You have to know, you have to be careful under whose teaching you are. You better be established in a church that believes in the word of God and don't, let, don't be deceived by just the supernatural. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. All right. As I said, faith without works is dead. I want to give you an example. <laughs> you know, generally people say, I believe, I believe, I believe. I'll give you a little example of this. John Wesley, a man of God, once said, most people don't seem to know the difference between mental assent and faith. Mental assent is what says, I believe, I believe, I believe. So he gave us an example in this. What does it really mean to believe? I heard of this and I want to share this. There was this guy who was a tightrope walker. You know tightrope walkers? In circus, you see a rope is tied across two poles and there's a guy walking on the, on the, on the rope with a with a, with a uh, staff in his hand trying to balance. Have you seen that? Okay. So this tightrope walker was uh, supposed to walk from one end of the Niagara Falls to the other end, from the Canadian side to the American side. So there was large crowds on each side watching this spectacle because if he did slip, that would, he would be history. So they were watching and he set off, went to the other side and everybody was clapping their hands. They were so excited. It was a successful move. So now he says, how many believe that I can go back successfully? Everybody shouted, yes, we believe. So okay, get me a wheelbarrow. You know what a wheelbarrow is? Do you know what a wheelbarrow is? Talk to me, please. Yeah, one wheel in the front and you take it on the road. Okay, so you carry bricks and cement to the construction sites. So get me a wheelbarrow. They get a wheelbarrow, they put, and he puts it on the, on the rope that he has to walk. He said, now, how many believe that I can go to the other side with the wheelbarrow? Everybody shouted, we believe. He said, no, no, you didn't hear me right. He said, I'm saying this. I have this wheelbarrow, okay? And I'm saying, how many of you really believe that I can go to the other side successfully? Everybody shouted, I believe, I, we believe, we believe. You know, when the crowds are large, how it can become uh, noisy and, uh, and uh, it could be a ruckus, everybody shouting. I said, okay, stop. You really believe? He said, yes, we believe. He said, who will be the first one to come and sit in here? <laughs> Nobody moved. Now do you do, know, understand the difference between mental assent and faith? 
They all said yes here, but they were not convinced. There was no conviction. If they were so sure, they should have jumped into that wheelbarrow. Most of us in our walk with God are walking in mental ascent and not in faith. Say amen. amen. So there was a lady in our church who was desperate for having a child. And one day, uh, my wife was moving in the gifts and she, she had this word that God was going to make, give children to babies. So she stood up, she received the word and she went away. Both husband and wife stood and they said, yes, we received that word. That word was just for us. Now she didn't just go back and sit down. She went back and both of them went shopping. They bought some baby clothes, put it in the, sh in the house. Then she took a pillow and she put it under a dress. And every day she would walk in front of the mirror and say, thank you, Lord, for my baby. She was working on something. You have to work your faith. What is she doing? She's consolidating that image. She's strengthening that image, okay, that God has put. These are props that he'll help you to see. What did God say? Come out of the tent, Abraham. Look up and count the stars. What was God doing? Setting up a prop for him. And say, that's how many descendants you will have. There will be countless. So every time he looked up, he saw what? Stars. No, he saw suns. So sometimes these props help you. Why? To impress that picture on the inside. So that even when you're sleeping, you're saying, I know, I will have a baby. I know, God has spoken. I cannot but bear a child. I will have this child. People laughed. People were joking. You know. But praise God, they eventually were blessed with a baby. Now, when we got married in the early days, we went through a rough patch financially. Very, very rough. And it was hot summer, and there was not even a little fridge in the house, and I was struggling. I was really struggling. But we said, we will not tell anybody. This is faith. We want to believe God for our supplies. We need a fridge. So we took a picture. We cut the picture of the fridge that we were looking for, the size, how many liters, and stuck it on the wall. Not inside, but outside, where, in, where people would come in. So when people would come and they saw the picture, I said, that's our fridge. You know, and They would laugh, just like you're all laughing now. <laughs> but we said, thank you, Lord, for our fridge. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord. You know, and we just, we saw the fridge. What was I doing? I was helping me myself to build that image inside me because you have to see it first because before you can have it. So those things are things that will help you to build that image. So one day a guy comes to me and says, he does not even, he hasn't seen my house. He hasn't come to my house. He says, you know what? The Lord is telling me that I should give you a fridge. Oh yeah. Okay. Praise God. And now I'm saying, I don't know what fridge is going to give. And he, he, he said, this is, the, this is the kind of fridge I want to give you. This is the color I want, it, I want you to have. And this is, this is how many liters it should be. That's exact specification that was on the wall. Hallelujah. I'm teaching. Take simple steps first. Start with small projects. You may have no needs, okay? Say, Lord... I am believing for 10,000 rupees, not for me, so that I can give to the church or I can give to that brother. I can give, or Lord, I want to buy a dress so I can gift it to somebody. I don't have the money, but I'm putting that picture there and I'm believing. Thank you, Lord. But when he gives you, don't wear it. Give it. <laughs> Amen. So I'm teaching you how to act your faith, how to work your faith. It's not mentally assenting, but not just mentally agreeing, but letting that word become real in you before you act on it. That's why when we have faith projects in our church, and we have awakening coming, there's a budget. I never tell people give. I say, look, I'm giving you an opportunity to sow into the kingdom. No pressure. You don't have to be under any pressure to give. I say this, listen, if you have a desire to give whatever that amount is if you have it in your heart 
God will put it in your hand. So I tell people, put that on the wall. I said, or put it in the envelope, bring it to me. I will agree with you and I will pray. If God doesn't give you that, you are not obligated to give. But if he does, be honest to return that to the Lord. And you know, we have seen amazing, amazing, amazing breakthroughs. Every time we've had this happen, we have seen more than enough pour in. Hallelujah. I'm trying to teach you how to act your faith. How to make your faith work for you. Say amen. Now, I'm closing now. I have a story which probably tomorrow I can share about how I was healed from asthma. How I was healed of different situations, when sicknesses that I faced in my life. But it all by faith. Let me tell you. To him that believeth, come on, say it with me. To him that believeth, all. Somebody shout all. I said shout all. All things are possible. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Did you get something this afternoon? Father, we thank you, Lord. I pray that you would help every one of us to truly grasp what I've shared, that we can begin to live and walk by faith and be able to work our faith, Lord, to possess the land, to possess every promise that you have given to us in your word. May the blessing of God rest upon your people as we continue in the conference. Bless us, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Were you all blessed? Yes. Hallelujah. This is a conference, which means the word, the word, the word, Amen. working in every session. Amen. Hallelujah. Yesterday I shared that God gave me three words as a sign for this conference. The first is that in the midst of you hearing the word, many of you will experience the touch of the anointing upon your life. Second is that in the midst of hearing the word, many of you will get healed in your bodies. And the third is in the midst of just sitting in the conference and hearing the word, you will get messages of good reports and testimonies that will come on your phone. Amen. Keep on believing and keep on seeing that come to pass. Yesterday, my wife and I received a good report in the middle of the service. A good report of what we are believing for. We are believing for tenants for our building. And we received a good report in the middle of the service. Hallelujah. Believe for yourself the same. These things that are happening is a sign that you are in the right place. Don't get distracted. Even just by sitting and receiving the word, God is working for you outside. God is working in your family. God is working in your circumstance. As you sit and receive the word by grace. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. Turn to Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10. Just a short point before we go into the word. The Bible says, If you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So, think about it. This is a very powerful revelation. I just received it a few months back. When you travel from Kohima to Hyderabad, you have to take a car that takes you to Dimapur. You have to take a plane from Dimapur to Kolkata. Another plane from Kolkata to Hyderabad. So you have to take a mode of transportation and it physically transports you from Kohima to Hyderabad. So, in our mind, transportation means leaving one geographical place and going to another place. But in the spirit, transportation is different. Before you were born again, you were in this kingdom called darkness. This kingdom called sin. But the Bible says, the way you live that place called sin and darkness and enter into the new kingdom of Jesus, the new kingdom of life and salvation, is this you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth you did not get the revelation the way you leave the old place and you enter into a new place in God is believing in your heart and speaking you didn't get it yet 
The way you leave the place of weakness and enter into the place of strength. The way you leave shame and enter into place of boldness. The way you leave poverty and enter into plenty. The way you leave sickness and into health is this. You believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth. So you don't have to leave Kohima. You don't have to leave where you are. Your transportation in the Spirit, it takes place by faith. And that's why we declared yesterday, say bye-bye to the place of shame. Say bye-bye to the place of weakness. And many of you did not understand in your mind. What do you mean? Just say bye-bye and I leave? Yes, that's what I mean. Our transportation in the realm of the Spirit is when you believe in your heart and you speak with your mouth. It takes you into a different dimension of living, experiencing life, experiencing God. So don't take the word lightly. Don't be so earthly conscious that you cannot grab spiritual realities. The way you leave one region and enter into another region in the spirit is when you believe in your heart. How did you leave sin and enter into righteousness? You believed and you spoke. And that very moment, you left the place called sin. Hallelujah. Say, I'm leaving the place of weakness. Say, I'm leaving poverty. I'm leaving shame. I'm leaving sickness. I'm leaving lack. And I'm entering into plenty. I'm entering into strength. I'm entering into boldness. It's by your speaking. Difficult to understand because we sometimes try to reason too much. Just believe the word. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to speak about how faith comes. What is faith? Faith is a firm conviction, a persuasion that comes from the word of God. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Turn to Romans chapter 10 verse 17. After I gave my life to the Lord, I experienced so much passion and enthusiasm in my walk with God that I began to devour the Bible. I began to read voraciously books that were written by men and women of God. And I began to have this hope of a different kind of life. A life that is filled with potential, possibilities and excitement in God. That the same experiences they had, I can also have. The same victories they have, I can also have. So my heart was filled with possibilities. But my life was still the same. My life did not reveal those realities. My life did not manifest what I was seeing in the Bible. So I understood, if only I had faith, like these men and women of God have, then I can also experience what they experience. So now I knew the solution. My solution was, I need faith. But where can I go and get faith? I prayed for faith. I fasted for faith. I assumed that if I just go to church regularly, faithfully, faith will just come upon me. But I realized faith does not come by accident. Faith doesn't fall upon you just because you are a good boy. Faith is not Santa Claus that comes on Christmas Day and, and places some gifts wherever he's supposed to do it. Amen. Then one day as I was reading a book, this verse jumped up at me and it says here, So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. A single word caught my attention. A single word. Faith comes. Faith comes. Everyone say faith comes. Faith comes. Faith comes. I did not have faith, but now I had the solution. The Bible told me, faith can come to you. If you did not have faith, faith can come to you. The good news is, if you came to this conference, broke, sick, disgusted, depressed, the good news is this, faith can come to you. Faith can come. When the road is built from Kohima to Dimapur, the trucks can come. And if the trucks can come, you know where to expect them coming up from the road faith comes hallelujah can you say amen so faith comes 
That means if you do not have faith, there is a way for you to get faith. And it comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. It doesn't come by trying very hard with spiritual works. It doesn't come by fasting. Even though in the midst of the fasting, God's Word can come to you and you can have faith. It doesn't come by your good works. Even though your good works of being involved in church activities can give you that position in your heart to receive the Word and that faith can come. Faith comes essentially by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Can you say Amen? Hallelujah. So now what does it mean to hear? How do I hear the Word? Is it as simple as just listening to a message? I want to present to you that hearing is something that is different from hearing from your ears. Because right now, all of you are hearing from your ears. But the hearing is not only confined to a physical exercise. By your ears, you have to learn to listen from your heart. And that's how faith comes. So I want you to turn to Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20 to 22 what does it mean to hear how can i hear what god is saying to me how can i hear what god is speaking to me through the logos so that it becomes a rema all right proverbs chapter 4 20 to 22 my son attend to my words underline that word attend incline your ear to my sayings underline the word incline let them not depart from your eyes Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those that find them, and health to all their flesh. This is the way you get a word from the Lord that becomes a rema, which becomes fate for you. It's a very personal word from the Lord. He says, my son. How many sons of God do we have here in this place? My son, attend to my word. Incline your ear. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life. That means the word that God is speaking. The words that God is saying to you. You must find them. It's not as simple as just buying a Bible. Buying a book. You must find God's word even in the Bible. That is personal to you. Because when you find the word, the Bible says, that word will become life to you. And health to all your flesh can you say amen hallelujah God is saying that when you find his word it will be health to your flesh health to your flesh health to your flesh means sickness will not be in your body and that word health in the original Hebrew also means medicine the Word of God will be medicine to your body when you find that word, it becomes medicine to you. Amen. So, if you can have health in your flesh, that is better than having sickness in your body. Amen. Let me explain this through a simple illustration. In the year 2003, I woke up one day with a severe panic attack. The pressures of ministry, the attacks from other men and women of God from this city and the pressures in the personal life all culminated in me experiencing a panic attack, a sudden attack of fear that I had never dealt with in my entire life. I could not sleep for many days after that. I entered into deep depression and for many days after that, I was in deep despair. Having come back from a Bible school that taught faith, being a man that was preaching faith, it was so paradoxical that I was experiencing such crisis, such tribulation and such weakness that I began to question the Word of God. I began to question whatever I was taught in the Bible school. And I began to put the mechanics of faith, the points of faith that I had learned in the Bible school to practice. I began to speak the Word of God. I began to declare the Word of God. And yes, it helped me maintain my sanity. But it did not give me breakthrough. It did not give me victory and liberty. Because every night I continued to battle panic attacks regularly. So I was slipping into this deep dark place called depression. One night, after many months, a sudden attack of fear came again at night. Around 2 a.m. in the morning. My mind was completely distressed 
it was running a thousand miles an hour in the sense that there was this attack of fight and flight syndrome when that attack of fear comes I did not know what to do I was panicking I was despairing I thought I was losing my mind so at that moment I said you know the Bible says that all of God's solutions come in his word so I'm going to open up my Bible and I'm going to read the Bible and just keep on reading and reading and reading till something happens no matter how long it takes so that's what I did I open up my scripture 2 a.m. in the morning and I began to read the Bible just from any random place and I just read and I read and I read and my mind was telling me you are wasting your time you are crazy my thoughts were telling me nothing is going to happen my feelings were so far removed from anything spiritual I did not sense the presence of God at all I was feeling fear my mind was filled with panic but I just forced myself to keep on reading the word and reading the word and reading the word. And then my thoughts told me, you're wasting your time. You just need to fast. But the problem was I had already fasted for many days. And it helped me maintain my sanity, but it did not give me breakthrough. Other thoughts came and told me, you need a man of God to pray for you. But I've already been prayed for by many other men and women of God, and yet it did not bring me lasting breakthrough. So despite all the different opinions and thoughts of my feelings and my circumstances, I decided I'm just going to look at the Word, pay attention to the Word, incline my ear to the Word of God, and keep on reading till something happens. And I remember reading the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 21 verse 19 and it says this such a random verse which made no sense to my condition and the verse says by your patience preserve your souls by your patience preserve your souls as I was paying attention that word leaped up from the scriptures and that word became my medicine because as I was asking God what is happening I need a breakthrough I need a victory that word became a rama that word was breathed by the Holy Spirit and it hit my heart now the experience was not dramatic I did not hear an audible voice but it happened in the recesses of my heart and mind you see I was not just reading randomly as I was reading, I heard what I read in that scripture in my heart. And through that verse, there was a breath of life from the Holy Spirit that was released into my heart. And that verse brought the faith that I needed to overcome. Because the faith from God there was this, relax, be patient, and you'll be okay. Hallelujah. So, the moment I heard that word, and I believe that word, God is saying, be patient. So I'm not going to worry about the feelings. I'm not going to worry about these thoughts. I'm just going to be patient. As I entered into practicing that word, suddenly an explosion of peace filled my heart and my mind. And then all the thoughts and the feelings of fear just disappeared. That was a rema from the Lord that brought faith and victory in my life. Since that time, in other days to come, when I'm driving, when I'm flying, if that thought of panic and fear was tempting to come back again, all I would do was repeat Luke chapter 21 verse 19. By your patience, preserve your souls and as I would think of that word and as I would speak that word that fear would leave again and as I kept on meditating on that word complete victory came in my life can you say amen hallelujah now what is that that is an experience of a rema that came as I was meditating and focused on the logos The rema comes from God, but the discipline, the 
patience and the effort to spend time in the Logos comes from you. It takes both to make it work. Can we say Amen? See, for God to work in your life, you need to be partnering with Him. For everything that God does on the earth, He does it through partnership with mankind. The body without the spirit is dead. Faith without works is dead. Hallelujah. So if you want God to move in your life, you have to partner with Him. You have to partner with the spirit realm. When Jesus taught His disciples to pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Think about that prayer. Our Father in heaven. The moment you pray, you have to be conscious of another realm. See, when you are praying, you cannot be conscious of your problem. You cannot be conscious of the persecution in the church. You cannot be conscious of the natural realm. Our Father in heaven. The moment you pray, you have to be conscious of the realm of heaven. And your Father who dwells in that realm. And the will of God is in that realm. And you have to partner with the spirit realm in order to change the circumstances in the natural realm. If you are a pastor, you have to partner with the spirit in order to grow your church. Can you say Amen? See, the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. It's not only the Spirit that says come. It's not only the Bride, the church, that says come. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Together. Hallelujah. So, we have to provide the body. And God provides the Spirit. The body is when you take this decision. Every day for 2024, I'm going to go to, I'm sorry, every day, not every day, every Sunday. Don't come on Monday, right? We will not be here. Every Sunday, I'm going to go to church. That's what you are providing by your belief, by your diligence. I'm going to read the Bible every day. You're providing the body. Can you say Amen. But in the midst of you providing that body, that faithfulness, that commitment, God initiates the spirit. God initiates that release of that wisdom. God initiates the release of that drama. And that together is how God brings forth the kingdom in your life. Hallelujah. The body comes from the earth. The spirit comes from heaven. The body that you have is made of dust. One day it's going to go to the earth. But the spirit man on the inside goes to the Father. The body without the spirit is dead. Amen. If you have a business, your business is the body. The business is the shell. But let me ask you this. What is the spirit that is powering that business? Because that's more important. This church building is the body. But the church, if it does not have the spirit, will die. The denomination, if it does not have the Spirit, it will die. Can we say Amen? Amen. That's why you need prayer. You need the Word. You need people who are committed. That's the Spirit behind the church. And that's what causes the church to grow. So even in your business, you need that prayer. You need that wisdom of the Lord. You need the Rema Word of the Lord because that's the Spirit that brings life to your business. And that Spirit is the Rema. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Can you say Amen? So there are four directions that is what you must understand when it comes to hearing the Word. Let's look at that. Number one, attend to the Word. You must give your attention, your undivided, concentrated attention to God's Word. Don't just say this. Well, faith comes by hearing the Rema. So I'm just going to wait for the Rema. If the Rema doesn't come, I'm not going to go to church on Sunday. I have to hear the, hear the Holy Spirit say, go to church. No. I have to hear the Holy Spirit read the Bible. No. You have to give your undivided attention to the Word of God. Listen to the Word. Read the Word. Go to church whenever it opens up to listen to the preaching and teaching of the Word of God. Can you say Amen? 
Hallelujah. Number two, incline your ear. Incline your ear means you need to be humble to lay down all preconceived notions about the word. Whatever you may have been taught about healing, if it doesn't line up with the word of God. Whatever you may have heard about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and tongues, if it doesn't line up with the word of God. Because there are so many churches, there are so many denominations, not everyone teaches the same. It's the same Bible, our interpretations are different. And some books are filled with unbelief, some books are filled with doubts. So you have to incline your ear means you have to be willing to lay aside whatever you may have heard about the topic in the past and be humble to hear with a teachable attitude. The first time I heard someone talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I just rejected it outright. But as I kept on hearing, and as I humbled myself, I realized that is the truth of the word. And whatever I was taught was wrong. Number three, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep your eyes focused on God's word. Keep your eyes focused. Don't let your attention wander. Don't give in to any negative testimonies that are opposite of what you are believing you're believing for healing for your father for yourself you have cancer and as you're believing for healing sometimes in fellowship with other christians you will hear testimonies like i also believed for my auntie but she died we also went to this conference and nothing happened Oh, I fasted for 30 days and nothing happened. Actually, they died. You will hear such testimonies in the church. So, it is very important that when you focus on the word, you remove all other testimonies, all other contradictions, and all other opinions and sayings that contradict that word that you are believing for. Articles. And now there's YouTube videos that are filled with criticism and attacks against teachings on faith, healing, and prosperity. You have to blank that out. You have to keep them in the midst of your eyes. Do not let that word depart from your eyes. Not only your physical eyes, but more importantly, the eyes of your heart. Can you say Amen? Hallelujah. And the fourth thing is this. Keep them in the midst of your heart. That means even when the word is not in your hand, the Bible. That means even when you are not listening to the message, even when you are not confessing it in the car that's in front of you, in your heart, you must keep on meditating on that word throughout the day. Keep meditating on that. Keep on keeping that word that you are believing or those verses that you're believing in front of you all the time. Because when you do that, like for example, if you are believing for financial breakthrough or you're believing for healing or you're believing God for wisdom to increase in your life, this is what you must do. Take all the verses about wisdom. Take all the verses about healing. Take all the verses about financial blessing and breakthrough and you begin to meditate on that. Put some work. When I was battling with fear, I printed all the verses about fear and how the name of Jesus overcomes that. How? By faith in God, we can overcome that. And I printed it out and I kept on reading them the whole day. I put in my own work. It's a fight of faith. Amen. And as you are doing that, you will experience the voice of God in the middle of all the word that you are listening, meditating, and hearing. And that's when you will begin to understand the difference between Logos and Rema. Alright, I want you to take a look at the screen right now. The Logos simply means the complete counsel of God that is expressed to us. The complete counsel or expression that comes from our mind in our context, the mind of God. So Logos is the unchanging, eternal, self-existing Word of God that is settled for all in eternity. An example of that is John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the Logos 
and the Logos was with God. And that entire counsel of God that he wants you and I to have is compiled in this book called the Bible, which is an expression that has come from God, a spirit being from his mind and his heart unto us. Can you say Amen? Hallelujah. But the word Rema is comes from a verb which means to speak. The word, the word Rema means an utterance. It's a spoken word. It's a specific word. It's specific to a time, specific to a person, specific to a situation. And to understand this difference is absolutely essential to understand how faith comes and how to operate in faith. So in Romans chapter 10 verse 17 wherein it says, So then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You see, in the Bible, and especially in the New Testament, you will hear or read that word, word. But in the Greek, that word, word could either mean logos or rhema. In Romans chapter 10 verse 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. The word, word here in this verse is not logos. It is rhema. Everyone say rhema. It's the word rhema. So faith comes by hearing the rhema of God. Some newer translation says the rhema of Christ. But essentially it's the same. Because every word that God speaks to us comes through Christ. It's His word. Amen. So faith comes by hearing. Now for a word to be heard, it must be spoken. So what was happening to me was this. As I sat on my Bible that night and I opened up the scriptures, I had in my hands the material, the material substance called the Bible with words that are written on pages. The whole council which is the Logos. And as I kept reading the Bible, Luke 21 verse 19 became the Rema to me. It was breathed into my spirit. And the moment I received it and believed it, it became medicine to my mind. It became medicine to my heart. And all that fear and that panic disappeared. In that word was the faith that enabled me to overcome. The Spirit gives life. The Bible says. The letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Which means this. There is no Rema without the Holy Spirit. To walk by faith. Prayer life. Submitting to the Holy Spirit. Sensitivity in your heart. Yieldedness in your heart is important. Because in the midst of all the word that you are reading, the sermons that you're listening, going to church and sitting, you have to listen to the Holy Spirit what He speaks to you. Even in the midst of all the three hours of teaching today, you have to listen to the Holy Spirit what He's saying to you personally. Because in that is the Rema. And the Rema comes loaded with God's power to make a possibility what God speaks to you. Hallelujah. So, let me show you these points. The Logos is a total counsel of God that is made available in the Scriptures. But the Logos is too vast and too complex for you to comprehend in its entirety. There are so many instances and words here about prosperity. There are so many instances and words here about healing. Amen. Hallelujah. But Rema, Rema is the way that the Holy Spirit takes a piece of the Logos and injects it into your situation. Did you follow that? Rema is the way that the Holy Spirit brings a portion of the Logos down out of eternity and releases it into your time and in your human experience. Rema is that portion of the total Logos that applies at a certain point in time to your particular situation. Rema is applied to your life 
for that specific time and location as you are seeking God and it is specific to you as Dr. Pata was saying the Lord spoke to him when he was having fever go and take a shower that was a rhema as he acted on that faith came and he was healed of his sickness it came in a specific time in a specific situation that's a rhema and that's the way that the healing which is God's logos healing is God's will for all of us can you agree on that yes or no but how does that become specific to you that's where we must seek the Lord and we must incline our ears to him so that the word the will of God which is God's logos for us becomes a personal word for us I hope you're getting this how many of you believe it's God's will for you to be blessed can I see your hands how many of you believe it's God's will for you to be delivered from every bondage of the enemy hallelujah how many of you believe you're blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ that's the logos now we believe that we confess that but the way God takes that logos and he makes it a specific word for you that when you receive it you have the faith to experience it is through a rema a specific word the key to your finances get this is not more money the key to your finances christians get this the key to your finances is a word from god you just need a word from god it will change your financial life Many of you are seeking some experts to give you some tips. Many of you are seeking more money. You're seeking contracts. You're seeking a rich uncle. <laughs> the key to your financial change is a word from God. The key to your marriage prospering is a word from God. The key to your church's growing is a word from God. A word. Every pastor, you need a word from God for your church. Not just the logos. The logos says the church is the body of Christ. The church is the bride of Christ. And yes, we believe that. We function in that. But God will give you a specific word for your church. God will give you a specific word for your town. God will give you a word for yourself. And it will not contradict the Logos. It will not contradict the Bible. Some years back, I was believing for financial breakthrough in my life. For blessing in my life, financially. I believe the Bible. I believe what it says. God will supply all my needs. I'm blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. I believed all of that. I confessed that. But I was not seeing the change that I wanted in my financial situation. So what did I do? I continued to study the scriptures. I continued to confess the word. And I continued to incline my ears to keep on hearing what God would say to me. And so as I was listening to this man of God, listening to his sermons. And that day was about three sermons that I listened. I was just listening to the sermons. I was just listening and listening to the logos. I was just inclining my ears to what was said in the sermons. Suddenly, there was this statement that he made. Bam! It came as a rhema to me. And the statement that came was not from a specific financial verse. It came from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2. Wherein it says, honor your father and your mother. Honor your father and your mother. Alright, let's see the scripture. Ephesians chapter 6. Honor your father and mother, which is a first commandment with promise. There is a promise that is there. And what is that promise? Verse 3. That it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. It may be well with you. That means it may go well with you. That you may have shalom in your life. Wholeness, wellness, prosperity, well-being. So that verse and that point that he made, became a rema to me and God breathed that verse into my heart and said the key is this honor your father and your mother 
So I made this decision to send on an offering to my own mother-in-law, my own mother, and to other men and women of God. I just sent the offering time and again, once in a while. I just send the offering. I just send the offering. I just send the offering. I just did it by faith. But that word became the key for me, the same person, the same ministry I was doing. But as I practiced that word, that grammar, my experience became different. Abundance started coming in. So as we began to practice that word more, by honoring other people who have made spiritual investment into our lives, some of them were not even pastors or teachers or in ministry. But in the past, they had made spiritual investment in our lives that has blessed us. And as we honored them, we experience abundance in our finances. The key was the rema. Getting that word from the Lord that comes through the logos that we are paying attention to. So once again, Let's look at these points. What is involved in hearing? Number one, we give close, undivided attention to what God is saying to us. From the Logos. Begin from there. Undivided attention to what God is saying. If it's healing you're believing for, get the verses on healing and keep on reading them and meditating on them. If necessary, print them out. Put them on your walls. Put them on your mirrors. Keep on looking at them. Paying attention to them. Make a firm decision to exclude all contrary distracting influences which includes negative testimonies from your relatives, from other Christians, from pharisaical people. Oh, I tried all of the tithing thing and it did not work. Blank out those kind of statements. Maybe it didn't work for them. I don't know why. I know the Bible. The Bible says if you give to the Lord, you will surely receive a return. So don't put yourself in their testimonies. Well, since it didn't happen for them, I don't think it will happen for me. No, don't judge your life by the testimonies of others. We don't know what God we don't know what was happening in the heart. Only God knows. You are responsible for your heart. And you're responsible for your belief. Can you say Amen? So, blank out those contrary voices and opinions. And just, it's between you and God. His word and you. And you just believe. Even if it did not work for anyone, Believe that it will work for you because you are believing in God and the integrity of His character. Hallelujah. Number two, incline your ear means adopt a humble, teachable attitude towards God. Renounce all your own prejudices and preconceptions that has come from your past experiences. Have you ever experienced this? When the pastor or somebody came up on the stage and talked about giving and giving by faith. Sometimes there's a negative feeling that comes. Have you ever experienced that? That's what we call a preconceived notion. That's what we call the old teaching you hear is becoming like a virus that is giving you a glitch at that very moment. And that's when the old beliefs begin to be like a shield of faith that resists the Word of God at that moment. Remember yesterday I told you about the shield of faith? Take the shield of faith with which you are able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. What's a shield of faith? The shield of faith is a system of beliefs that you have built in your life based on your study of the Word of God. And so many of us with our past experiences in other churches and in other movements may have heard some teachings that are opposite to the Word of God, that are contrary to the work of the Holy Spirit, that are opposite to giving and tithing. Now when you come to a church like this and you hear about giving and you hear about God prospering you, the old teaching may tend to come up and oppose that teaching that you're hearing at that moment. 
you have to let go of that preconceived notion humble yourself to go into the word again and ask the Lord to give you a renewed mind hallelujah incline your number three focus your eyes on the words that God has directed you to do not let your eyes wander to statements from other sources preachers theologians that conflict whatever God is saying in that verse we're healed by the stripes of Jesus that's absolutely clear Isaiah 53 2nd Peter is absolutely clear but you may read books that will say, well, that's not talking about physical healing. You may hear statements from preachers that contradict some verses that you're standing upon. The enemy will whisper thoughts and feelings that tend to contradict what you are reading in the Word of God. So in order to pay attention to the Word, we must be willing to let go of those feelings, thoughts, opinions. Remember this, faith only stands on the Word of God. I had to make this statement so many times as I was battling that fear. I don't believe what I feel. I don't believe what I am going through. I believe only the Word of God. Because I was going through fear. I was feeling fear. I was going through this darkness in my thoughts. So I had to keep on stating my faith. I believe what the Bible says. And the Bible says I'm delivered from the powers of darkness. The Bible says fear is under my feet. The Bible says God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. So it doesn't matter what I am feeling. It doesn't matter what I am going through. It doesn't even matter what thoughts are coming upon me. Only the word of God matters in my life. Only what God says matters in my life. I believe only what God says. I even had to say, I don't believe my own thoughts. Because my thoughts were telling me, you're losing your mind. So I said, I don't believe my thoughts. I believe only the thoughts of God. And the thoughts of God is this. I have a sound mind. I have the mind of Christ. So I don't believe my thoughts. You have to come to a place when you have to reject your own thoughts. That's how you walk by faith. Look at Isaiah and we'll close here. Isaiah 55 verse 8 to 13. The prophet gives us the relationship between Logos and Rama here. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. But as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there without watering the earth, and making it bare and sprout, and furnishing seed to the sower and bread to the eater, verse 11, so shall my word be which goes forth from my mouth, the rhema of God. It shall not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. So here we have two different realities. The thoughts of God and the word of God which is from the heavenly reality, divine reality, the spirit realm. And then we have our own thoughts, our own feelings, our own reasoning which is from the earthly realm. God is saying his thoughts are not like our thoughts. He doesn't think like us. Are you getting it? Amen. Hallelujah. So, how can I walk in his realm? How can I begin to think like God? See, his thoughts have to come down to us like rain and snow that comes upon the ground and when it falls on the ground it produces fruit are you getting it hallelujah so the word of god which is settled forever in the heavens it is written it is written it is written hallelujah that word is what we must receive That word is what we must take in the heart. 
Because when we do that, it is like rain that falls upon us. It is like the snow or the dew that comes upon us. And God says that His Word will surely fulfill that for which He sends His Word. There is power in every rema to fulfill whatever God speaks. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. See, the word from the realm of the Spirit, when it comes to us in a realm, is what elevates us into that supernatural, divine experiences, where the word becomes flesh. Jesus says, Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds. It's the same as it is here in Isaiah chapter 55. My word which goes forth from my mouth. Men shall live from every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And the word proceeds implies a relationship. It is a continuous present tense. That means there is a word that proceeds from God for every season of your life. You do not live from last year's word. You do not live from last year's messages. As you walk with God, God speaks to you. Which means this. In the future, for my financial breakthrough, God may not say Ephesians chapter 6. He will speak to me a different word. But if I assume, if I presume, if I buy my pride and my flesh, instead of seeking God in humility, I say, well, last year it worked for me, so let me try to work it like a formula again. Like what Pastor Pata was saying. Take a shower again without seeking God. He fell flat on his face. So in the same way, the word that proceeds from the word of God, it implies a relationship, a humility, a connectedness, a yieldedness to the Holy Spirit so that in every season, He speaks a different word, which means this, what God speaks to me may not be what He speaks to you. Brother Hagen shared in a conference about how God spoke to him to give his car away. And as he gave his car away, God blessed him with a better car. So some students at Rema, they decided, I'm going to do what Brother Hagen did. And they gave the cars away. And they walked for the rest of the year. <laughs> because they did not hear from God. Amen. So you have to push in. To hear in the midst of all the sermons you're listening, in the midst of all the word that you are reading, incline your ear, the ear of your heart, to get that verse, that point, that, and it may not come spectacularly. It may not come as a vision, it may not come in a very divine encounter kind of experience. It may come just as a gentle, soft whisper in your heart. But as you act on that, that Rema is put potentially full of God's power to bring that word in your life. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 1 verse 31 to 33. I know you're hungry. Hallelujah. See, there's a way that God releases His divine thoughts, His divine power into our realm. It is through His Word that proceeds from His mouth. That Word. So that Word is a key to your ministry, to your life. And God will keep on speaking. And what He speaks to you today will corroborate with what He spoke to you last year and it will add another level in your life. It will add more. That means whatever God speaks to you throughout your life has one purpose and destiny and that is to make you a man and a woman of God that fully glorifies God on the earth. Hallelujah. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you shall name him Jesus 
He will be great. He will be called the son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom will have no end. The angel told Mary. And Mary said, How will this thing be since I have not known a man? So the angel said in verse 37, For with God, nothing will be impossible. Now take a look at that word nothing. That word nothing in the English means nothing. But in the Greek, that word nothing is two words u rema which means no rema no word from god no word that god gives specifically personally to someone no word that comes from god is impossible with god so that was the rema that god spoke to mary through the angel and what did mary say mary said be it unto me according to your word. She received that word. The moment she received that word, she believed that word. And the word she believed exploded in her womb. And she got pregnant by the power of the Spirit. Amen. And it was by her faith that God brought forth His Son on the earth. A rema word. No rema is impossible with God. That means whatever God speaks to you is full of divine power and potential and heaven's abilities to make that word come to pass in your life. But the thing is this, even her own fiancé doubted her. Her parents doubted her. Her whole village doubted her. Jesus was born in a scandal because the drama came to him, to her alone. She had to believe it despite all the contradictions and the criticisms and the opposition. And that's what a rema will do to you. Because when the word comes to you, it comes to you. It doesn't come to your wife. It doesn't come to your husband. It doesn't come to people around you. That word comes to you. And you have to believe it. Be convinced about it. And be willing to sacrifice even your reputation for it. Then it will come to pass. Because there will be so many other voices that say that can never happen. Rema that comes to you. Faith comes by that. Faith comes. Faith comes. Faith comes. Faith comes. So, you don't have to try to work up faith. You don't have to try to be loud to produce faith. Sometimes in the charismatic church, we try to produce faith by loudness. We try to cast out demons. We try to be louder than that lady who is shouting. We think that by a loudness we can produce faith. No. Faith is not produced by loudness, by trying to impress people. Faith is produced by knowing, hearing the Word of God and speaking it with authority. Hallelujah. Even in Abraham's life, it was the same. God came to Abraham and told him, leave your father's house. It was a ramah. God came to Abraham and Sarah and said, Your name is Abraham from today. Your name is Sarah from today. And as they received that word with all the criticism they faced from their society and their own servants, they believed that word and that became a reality. So a vital component of faith is your relationship with God, out of which God speaks to you. Through the word that you're listening and hearing, He speaks a rhema to you. So faith can come. If faith can come, it can come to all of us. Hallelujah. Amen. Not just to mighty men and women of God. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. It doesn't come only to prophets, apostles, pastors. Faith comes to every believer as you hear the word of God. Can you stand to your feet? Hallelujah. Can you raise your hands right now? Can you thank God for His word? Can you thank God that as the Logos is being delivered, the Rema is being delivered, released in your heart right now. Come on, begin to praise Him. Begin to thank Him. 
Hallelujah. Father, we pray for an explosion of Rema even in the evening service even in the rest of the services lord father we pray for an explosion of rema that by the holy spirit everyone here in the middle of the conference will hear a rema or many remas from the lord that are about the conditions the situations the families the ministries their finances father we pray that you will speak remas to every person even watching online lord god father we pray that in the rema will be the potential and the power of God released over the situations that will take them to that level, that will take them to that new experience, that will take them to the breakthroughs, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God. We bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Remember, we come back at 5 p.m. and we're going to have a powerful time in the Lord. Come expecting to receive ministry also. Go down there, have lunch. God bless you all. I believe that you have been blessed by the Word of God. If you have any testimonies or prayer requests any time of the day, you can contact or email us at the information given down below. And if this message has blessed you, we encourage you to please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Thank you and God bless you.